Hey what's up guys welcome to another video so this is basically third video in our API security pen testing series so if you have not watched the previous two video the first part is about API pen testing overview where we have talked about the basics related to API pen testing and different approaches or what all vulnerability that you can basically find in an API security pen testing the second part is about pen testing for attack like let's say SQL injection and also things like read limit bypass and all those things so you can go ahead and watch those second part also so i'll put the link in the description box of this particular video uh, so that you can go ahead and watch those so this is the third part basically where we are going to talk about few more attack related to web services or rest api so some of the attack that we are going to discuss are business logic bypass and we are also going to see some of the attack related to your insecure direct object reference, privilege escalation, uh, view of the popular attack like XSS in web service. We are also going to see like how we can play around with the authorization token, the command injection and many more. So please do watch this video till the end to get all those uh, ideas to perform secure dependent testing on your REST API. Also, don't forget to hit like, to share and subscribe to my channel for more videos that I put pretty regularly on information security. So let's get started. So in this video, we are going to first uh, take a look at the, some of the calls that you might have already know. If not, then you can go to this particular URL, which I have already provided in my previous two videos also. So here you can see there is a API calls basically for fetching the user data. Uh, after login so if you have seen our previous api calls uh, which looks like something user login and as soon as i perform the user login uh, we can see the token that has been generated uh, and it says about some of the details like user id 1 and user 1 so there is another uh, api calls which is basically to fetch the details of the specific user so when i say details it's basically fetching the password username and id so let's go ahead and try to generate the second request uh, to see the user details so we could see here i have already generated the login token so i'll simply copy it and i just use the same calls if you could see here the user one get request the same user one get request with x o auth token where we are going to replace with the oauth token now if i send this particular request so it is going to fetch me the details as per the request like it says like here is the user one, here is the password one, and this is the ID. Now if you could see here, we should not basically see the password in clear text. That is the first vulnerability. Anybody or any REST API should not leak about the password in clear text. It's a really, really a big issue. So there is some encryption that need to be done. Again, it is missing over here. So this is one of the vulnerability that you can report basically in your API security pen testing. Now uh, let's try a few of the attack that we can perform over here. Now if you could see that here is the get request and user equal to or user slash one. Now what we can do basically is change this user to two and see whether we can able to fetch the, fetch the user two data. So if I send this request, now if it is a vulnerable scenario then we would have seen the, the user details of user two, right? But since it is not vulnerable to your insecure direct object reference, we cannot basically perform the or view the data of different user. So if I see here, uh, try sending like two or three, basically I'm just trying to fudge to see if I can get any other user details. But unfortunately there is some protection over here. So we could not basically view the second user data over here or the user data that you can see for different user. So this is uh, related to your IDOR that you must test while you are performing security testing on REST API. It is pretty common and it is very much likely that you might end up finding some of the insecure direct object reference. Now I am going to make a separate video on finding insecure direct object reference uh, with automation or privilege escalation with automation also. So do subscribe. I will be posting another video soon on those kind of attack. How you can automatically detect those kind of vulnerability using some of the BOP extension. So that will be a separate video altogether. Now over here we couldn't see the other user details. Now uh, here you could see that uh, I have used this X auth token equal to something like this, right? Now this is the token that I generated just now. Now if you go back and let's say I'm pressing this twice and yeah, you could see here, this is one of the token 
which was existing earlier this is one of the token that i have used probably half an hour back basically to see if i can uh, fetch the user details now typically what happen whenever a new authorization token is been generated then the previous authorization token should expire right this is one of the bug that is related to your improper implementation of authorization token now i am not talking about jwt token so that is a separate video that i have made on jwt token and attacks on it so probably you can put i will put the link over here you can go through and watch it but over here you could see that the previously generated authorization token will still work so if you could see that i just press the send button and i can still see the details of user one but uh, if you see here this is the newly generated authorization token and if i send with that particular token with the next request if you could see here then i can still able to fetch the user details now this leads to another vulnerability that authorization token or the previously generated authorization token is not expiring because as i said typically there are some time duration some of the time if not there are some there should be some mechanism to handle this authorization token properly so if there is time limit then it should expire within let's say 2 to 5 minute if there is no such time limit is present then the previous authorization token should expire as soon as you generate another uh, authorization token so this leads to another vulnerability that you can basically report in your api security pen testing now i have tried really very hard for finding out some of the issue related to insecure direct object reference over here but unfortunately it is not applicable but you can definitely try that in your application it might happen that you will end up getting some of the vulnerability like insecure direct object reference now with that let me talk about one of the another vulnerability which most of the time people get confused or uh, related to privilege escalation now privilege escalation typically happens whenever one user is able to perform some operation of another user or let's say one user is able to perform some of the admin functionality which he should not be allowed or typically restricted right so if a user is perform operation on behalf of another user or higher privilege user then this will be called as your privilege escalation now there are horizontal privilege escalation and vertical privilege escalation so it depends on type so if the user are of same level then you will have it will be called as horizontal privilege escalation now if a regular user is able to perform some of the operation of the admin user then it will be called as your vertical privilege escalation so again these are another different topic as i said i will make a separate video on idor and privilege escalation using bob suite extension also so that time i will uh, give you more example so yeah right now if you could see that we have not able to find out privilege escalation however uh, let's see few more vulnerability that we can do over here now if you could scroll down then you can see basically there is uh, one of the request uh which clearly speaks about the uptime right? talking about what is the uptime of the server so the request goes something like this uh it's like a simple get uh, and uptime slash s so let's try generate this request so what i am going to do is i'm going to send this to repeater again and i'm going to name it at uptime and this request is pretty simple and uh, yeah i don't think we even need this authorization token as per the request uh, that has been given to us if i send this particular request you could see that uptime hyphen s the command that has been ran and this is the particular output that we can see basically now let's see what all attacks that we can see the one of the crucial thing that you can see over here is the content type is text plus html this is really interesting right so what i can do over here basically is instead of providing this s i can try injecting some of the different values so i'll start with attacking the xss attack and see we can perform few of the more attack now if i type xss right here then it says like uptime hyphen xss which mean i can basically go ahead and try any xss payload over here and if i am lucky enough then it will work now to try this xss attack what i am going to do is i'm going to inject some of the very common payload now if you don't know about this payload then you can always go ahead and google like xss payload and simply press enter now the it will take to the xss payload list one of the pretty popular xss payload list where there are a lot of different payloads are already mentioned you can pick any one and basically try and see whether those are going through or not now let's say i'm taking one of the very famous one uh, like image src equal to 1 or something like that right so what i'm going to say is 
image src equal to x one of my favorite payload and then i'm going to say on load equal to confirm let's say i'm saying xss now if i send this request it is not basically going or uh, sending me anything back the reason for this is probably the space so let's try converting the url those spaces or the white spaces now for white spaces the code is percentage to zero now if you are someone who don't know basically for this percentage to zero then you can go to this decoder option and put a single space and say encode as url now you could see that this is percentage to zero uh, instead of space i am just going to add this percentage to zero right because the application is not allowing me to inject this percent uh, space now if i can see this is basically running my payload and this is the response that i can see now another things to look over here is okay this should work basically because i am successfully able to balance this access as payload so now let's try with the browser and see if it is working or not so i'm going to say request in browser copy and i'm going to just say over here like this now if you could see that it has slight bit broken uh, let's inspect the element and see okay so why it is not working so what i am going to do is basically add a semicolon and see if it is working because this is what should be the proper payload look like i am going to say request with browser with original session and let's go ahead and see this uh, okay so it is again breaking it is not properly running so let's go ahead and change this event handler from on load to let's say on error and see if it is working R R O R and let's try send it with browser original session the same steps and see right now you can see this particular payload is working because that was on load event handler now if I change to on error then this thing basically work I was just doing a tiny mistake which is fine sometime it happens so if you see my part one video where I have talked about uh, SQL injection vulnerability so just like that we have taken one more example uh, to see you or uh, showcase you the XSS vulnerability now the XSS was possible the only major reason for this is your text class HTML now if you could see over here in the user data view request content type it is coming it as an application slash JSON that is the major reason uh, why the response is not able to make you an XSS execute now if I try let's try do these things uh, because sometimes this thing work now if you change the content type to let's say I'm saying it to text plus HTML if it is a vulnerable scenario or if this is not been validated properly then you might end up finding accesses but right here it is not working but sometime it worked by changing the content type you might able to get an accesses this typically works in some of your accesses challenge I guess in hacker one there was a challenge recently uh, which has been conducted I guess on uh, 31st of July of 2020 so there it has this kind of challenge where you can modify the content type to uh, from uh, application slash json to text slash html and it was accepting and giving you an pop-up or the xss was running successfully i think for that the hacker or the researcher got i think 200 usd or something now some of the people might ask actually can we control the content type while sending the request right if it is content type is uh, like application slash json can we contain that content type to text.html from a browser point of view or in a real life attack? So that is a very interesting question. Uh, if you know the answer, please do write in the comment box. If you don't know, then please just wait. I will make another video on that. Like how you can perform this kind of logical attack to bypass some of the scenario. Now there are some of the precondition obviously need to be meant like uh, one of the example I would say like the content types if you after changing from application slash json to text slash html should work so yeah there are some of the preconditions that need to be met but you can do that that is really possible possible now if you look at this request closely then you can see that there is a parameter that it is basically going through as an command hyphen s and it is the response it is basically giving now if instead of s if i try let's say i'm just trying id and see whether it is working or not so it says it is not working properly so let's keep it to the same s only and what why i'm going to do is put a semicolon and then i'm going to say the id value 
see whether I can make a command injection work or not. So if you could see here, then I can see this user ID value right here root and zero, right? So this means this is a root user. I can basically perform this command injection. So I have made a specific video on OS command injection. I'll put the link again in the description and this icon over here also so that you can go ahead and watch this video. It is really nice again uh, based on your OS command injection, how you can detect, how you can basically find this OS command injection like here we have done. So similar, pretty much similar attack. So OS command injection is another attack that you can basically try on your uh, like REST API pen testing. Now in our next video, uh, I'm going to talk about how we can perform some of the more attack. Those are related to your uh, command injection and other thing. So do let me know if you have any other question related to the few of the attacks that we have discussed and do like in the comment box if you have any other query. I will try make few more videos uh, this week so that you guys get more idea and uh, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you. Do subscribe.